Hi, I'm Tony Keat, the Christmas Light Guy. In this tutorial, I'll explain to you how I built my Firework Star without the use of a 3D printer. If you're thinking about adding a Firework Star to your display, I highly suggest checking out the information and videos from the YouTube channel called Lights on Waverly. Charlie from Lights on Waverly has put a lot of effort into documenting how he built his Firework Star. He's come up with a very clever method for quickly inserting and removing the spokes from the firework star. However, his design requires 3D printed parts, many small screws, nuts, and springs to accomplish this. I don't have a 3D printer, and I wanted to come up with a simple method to mount the spokes in a firework star. Here's the method I used. For the hub of the firework star, I used a Bill Dance porcupine fish attractor sphere that I ordered from Amazon. It was about $30, and yes, it's actually a fishing device. Here's what the porcupine sphere looks like. It has 26 holes for the spokes. I'll discuss mounting options briefly before getting into details of building the spokes. There are two mounting methods for the firework star using a porcupine sphere. You can use a pole like this, or there's a couple different ways to hang it. If you use the pole method, you will lose one spoke since the spoke hole is being used for the pole mount. I decided to hang my firework star using 1 16th inch steel wire mounted from a horizontal pole from the corner of my roof. I also decided to add two additional wires going from the sphere to the ground to act as stabilizer so that the firework star doesn't move around too much. More on mounting later. Now let's take a look at building the spokes. The porcupine spear is designed for one half inch PVC pipe for the 26 spokes. I didn't want to use something as big and heavy as half inch PVC pipe for the spokes, so I used 3 16 diameter solid white fiberglass rods cut to 24 inches long. Next, I took half inch PVC end caps. I drilled a hole, a starter hole, and then a 3 16 hole in the end cap for the rod. Then I stuck the rod into the end cap, and then I filled the end with landscape cement, PL500 landscape cement. Let me show you that. This is what that looks like. You ask why landscape cement? Honestly, I had some left over from a project that I built and I decided to give it a try. It worked very well. However, it did take a couple days to completely dry. I built 26 of these, one for each spoke. Next, it was time to wire the spokes. I decided to build a continuous string of pixels for my firework star. Let me explain. Each of the 26 spokes has 10 pixels for a total of 260 pixels. I started by cutting the first 10 pixels with my input connector attached. In this case, an X-Connect connector. Then I cut 25 strings of 10 pixels each. After that, I cut 25 pieces 28 inches long of three core flat wire, which I'll refer to these as extensions. Next, I soldered the strings of 10 pixels with the 28 inch extensions in between to create a long continuous string of 260 pixels. The string starts with the input connector and the output connector is connected to the last extension. I will explain why a bit later. Next, I attach the pixels to the spokes, starting with the 10th pixel. So this is the beginning, and this is the 10th pixel. I use two 4-inch cable ties to attach the pixel to the rod. For the next pixel, you lay the extension wire flat. Here's the extension wire and flip the pixels over and attach with two more cable ties. Continue to attach each of the 10 pixels to the rod. 
Here's what a completed rod with 10 pixels looks like. You can see they are mounted evenly across the entire length of the rod. I built 26 of these. Here's what all 26 looked like after I was finished. On the 26th rod, attach your output connector to the last extension. You may also want to consider adding power injection here as well. Next, I mounted the hub or the porcupine ball so I can complete the build of the firework star. I used 1 16th steel cable attached at four points evenly spaced around the hub. This is referred to as a four point mount. I used four small threaded eye bolts to attach the steel cable to the hub. The steel cables had crimped loops on one end and crimped loops with the small threaded eye bolts attached to the other end. Two of the four steel cables were fixed length of three feet long. The other two steel cables were slightly longer at three and a half feet in length. The longer cables were cut in the same location and I added a one eighth inch wire clip between the two cut ends. This allows for some adjustment in the length to be able to level the hub when it's mounted. I did this because I found it very difficult to cut and get the steel cables the same length, especially having loops on both ends. Next, I inserted the 26 wired spokes with the 10 pixels each into the spoke holes of the hub. The 1 half inch PVC end caps fit snugly into the spoke holes. Notice, prior to inserting the spokes, I labeled both the hub spoke holes and the wired spokes 1 through 26 with a permanent marker. This makes it much easier and faster to assemble. I started at the top with the first spoke, and then in a spiral direction inserted the other spokes into the spoke holes, ending with the last spoke on the bottom spoke hole. So spoke number one goes on the top, spoke two through nine goes on the second row, spoke 10 through 17 third row, spokes 10, 18 through 25 on the fourth row, and spoke 25th, 26 goes in the bottom. The last step, I added a string of 50 pixels for the rocket trail. The input to the rocket trail string is the beginning of the firework star model and the output is connected to the input of spoke one. Adding the rocket trail brings the total count of the firework star to 310 pixels, 260 for the star, and 50 for the rocket trail. This was a very time consuming project, but I'm very happy with the outcome, and I believe it is a unique prop and will add to my overall display. There are a few things I learned and would probably do differently on my next firework star build. For example, instead of soldering a continuous string of 26 spokes, I would break the strings into at least two sections, each with 13 spokes. I would also add input and output connectors so that you could connect the strings together. This would make the assembly much easier since you're dealing with fewer spokes, less twists, and less tangles. Another example is I would also attach the pixels to the spoke rods as you build them instead of attaching after the pixel strings and extensions are all soldered together. So once you've soldered together 10 pixels and an extension, go ahead and attach the 10 pixels to the rod using cable ties. This is much easier than dealing with a very long continuous string of pixels and extensions. One final point. I highly recommend you test each spoke as you build it and add it to the other spokes. Everyone makes mistakes. It is much easier to fix an issue as you build it rather than finding an issue after you've wired everything. Trust me, I know from experience. Depending on the interest level of this video, I may create future Firework Star tutorials on such topics as using X lights to sequence the fire, Firework Star and how I mounted the firework star to my house. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new from it. If you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe.
All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.